Welcome, this is the Algebra 1 end of course practice test number 3, question number 10. The question says the first three figures in a pattern are shown below. And you can see the figures there. Which expression represents the number of small squares in figure n? Now when they say figure n here, of course they mean the generic form of the equation. So I could plug in any figure number I want and I could find out how many squares are in it. So for me, I'm going to make a table first. I tend to be a table type. It just makes it easier for me to see. So my n value is going to be my uh, figure number. So figure 1, figure 2, figure 3. My output is going to be squares, specifically the number of them. In the first one, I have 1. In the second one, there's 5. And in the third one, 13. Now, I can use this information to try to uh, figure out which of the expressions makes the uh, system work or which function rule actually creates this data there's a few ways that you can do it the simplest way is to use it to advantage the fact that it's a multiple choice question so all I'm gonna do is test the answers so for my first one I'm gonna do 2 and 5 I don't like to pick 1 and 1 you get that answer a lot so I'm going to do 2 and then my n value would be 2 and I'm going to square it minus 3 so 2 squared is 4 2 times 4 is 8 and 8 minus 3 is 5. So that looks halfway decent. So let's check 1 to see if I get 1. What I'm doing is plugging in this number here, trying to get this number. So if I do 2 and 1 squared minus 3, uh, 1 squared is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So that's out. So D is not the correct answer. So I can mark out D as a possible answer choice. From there, I'm going to go to C just because it's the next one up, and I'm going to try the same exact thing. In this case, uh, my n value for my first one will be 1. I usually start in the middle, but I already started writing 1 as I was saying it, so why not? Um, I'm looking to plug in a 1 right here, and I should get a 1 as my result. 1 plus 1 is, of course, 2. Uh, so it would be 2 squared minus 3, or 4 minus 3, which is, of course, 1. So things are looking good. I've got, like, one sort of check mark in my, in my box there. So the next one, I would do 2 plus 1. And, of course, I'm plugging into, I'm hopeful that I pop out a 5 here. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So 3 squared minus 3. Uh, 3 squared is 9. And 9 minus 3 is 6. So, unfortunately, this one is out as well. I'm going to try the next one in the group. So I'm going to look at n squared plus n minus 1 squared. So I'm going to look at the idea of plugging a 1 in here, squaring it. Once again, I'm right in the middle of saying it. So 1 plus 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Or sorry, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 squared is just 0. So I get a 1. So that's good. Now let's try 2. 2 squared plus 2 minus 1 squared. So I end up with 4. 2 minus 1 is 1. And 1 squared is 1 as well, so 4 plus 1, or 5. So that looks good. Hopefully the last one works, and I found my answer. So for this one, I'm going to do 3 squared plus 3 minus 1 squared. And remember, my output, I hope, is 13. So 3 squared would be 9. Uh, 3 minus 1 is 2, so that would be 2 squared being 4. And 9 plus 4 is 13. So I know, because they all work, that B is the correct answer to that question. Now, if you wanted to go about looking at uh, change values in terms of, okay, so there's the change from here to here is 4, and the change from here to here is 8, so that's a component. Uh, this one goes up by nothing. This one goes up by 3. This one goes up by 10. And then if I looked at the changes there, maybe there's something. Um, you could probably end up getting to the point that you want to go. But if I start thinking about, okay, so there's only four difference here, so maybe since this one didn't work, it's probably not linear. The differences would be the same if it was just uh, the n value, but there's none of those in my question. So this might say, since I only have one, that there's an n squared involved. So I'd start squaring the numbers. I'd look at uh, 2 squared being 4, and then from there I'd start to think, okay, what do I need to do to get to 5? So I'm going to add 1 to get to 5. In 1 squared, is 1. Uh, what do I have to do to get to 1? Well, I add nothing. In the next set, I think, okay, well, I have 3 squared, so that's 9, and I'm trying to get to 13, so I need this to be a difference of 4. And I start to see, oh, wait a minute. This is 
1 here, 4 here, and 9. So I know that n squared is going to be part of it. And then I need to think, okay, well, this would represent the term behind it. So what if I just added n minus 1 squared? So I'd come up with the same answer. Just based on the idea that when I had 1 squared, if I'd go, or if, sorry, if I had 2 squared, this number is the same as this one. So that's where I'm getting that number in terms of where it pops in. But anyway, it's multiple choice. You'll probably do it the other way anyway, but just in case you want to work it out mentally, cool in the gang.